All right, evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, Main Line of Beyond with Mark Singer. Uh, first episode tonight, pretty excited. And I'm um, here at the Daydream Creative Studios in Ardmore, PA. And uh, just uh, going to have a nice, comfortable talk show here about music, arts around Ardmore, Main Line, and Philadelphia area. Uh, seems like something that, uh, you know, needed a show like this. So, Pretty excited tonight. I have a few guests. I have two guests, I should say. Uh, the owner of the studio here, Mr. Najee Grant, and uh, members of the band 314, good friends of mine. Pretty excited to have them also as the first guests tonight. Uh, <clears throat> so I guess uh, without any uh, hesitation, uh, we'll bring Najee on. All right. Appreciate you. Yeah, back at you, man. This is very cool. So I um, thought this would be the best way to kick off Why not? the podcast. Why not? Exactly. And, uh, you know, this is a cool space you created here. Um, Naj put up a post on Facebook asking about people that, you know, were in Ardmore, kind of connected to the community, that wanted to have some more connection with the community. Uh, it's where I live. It's where I spent a lot of time. So I was the first to respond is what you told me. That's right. Yeah. First one. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> the podcast is something that I had kind of scraped the surface with um, because being in real estate, it, I knew it would be a creative way to kind of connect with people. And I, I created a couple of different ones, one of them around real estate where I had a, a financial advisor on talking about uh, different aspects of, uh, you know, real estate and um, also interior designers. And then I've done a few on music um, and being a musician is, is a real passion for me. And I thought it'd be cool to kind of, you know, bring that all together. Um, and thank you for hosting this here because basically through this Facebook post that Naj put out, we connected and here we are. So uh, I wanted to just kind of have the listeners out here uh, learn a little bit about the studio and, you know, kind of what inspired you a little bit about yourself. No, I appreciate you. Um, yeah, you were the first one to, first to respond. Um, the end of the year, I had a, an epiphany to just reach out to the community. Um, we had a slew of uh, uh, shows last year, 2022, and I'm like, I want to hear something new. And so I put out the call and you were the first to respond and you're the first to your show um, top of this year. Um, for me, I'm a children's author. So I'm from Ardmore. Um, this year, this month, January will be 10 years uh, publishing when my publishing uh, career. Um, and by the end of this year, it'll be 20 books that'll be written and published. Wow. Um, and we opened up the studio in August of uh, 2021. Um, yeah, August 2021, um, with the idea that it's not just about our work, um, publishing, we do books to merchandise, um, websites, um, to sneakers, to magazines. Whoa. Uh, you know, we do, we do it all. Mm -hmm. um, but then we also open up the space for other people, such as yourself, to uh, do their podcasting. We do documentaries to short films. Um, as well. So we bring in like local creators from all different spectrums. So we're a mass media and, and entertainment business that does publishing, uh, streaming, music, books, you name it, all that. Cool. So kind of like a creative outlet for, mm -hmm. for folks in the community and, and the children's books, 20 of them, huh? Yeah, but in the year, it'll be 20. So our first 10 were just everything was in our, in our creative mind, just coming out with our own ideas, own stories. And then, um, we started getting into uh, consulting, and actually now we write children's books for other companies now. So that's pretty much what we've been doing for the past two years. Very cool. Well, connecting with the youth—that's that's, that's uh, you know, it's nobody uh, better to connect yeah. with in a lot of ways. So having two little ones myself—that's that's a uh, and special. we want to start young. Right? Mm -hmm. So like for me, you know, as I got into like middle school, high school. Mm -hmm like most, like a lot of other people, like straight off with uh, academics. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't very good at academically. 
um, like ninth, tenth grade, I actually failed my freshman year in high school at Lower Marion. Oof, yeah. um, I only passed two classes, three class, three classes in my ninth grade year. Okay. Um, but it was the messages that my mom and dad would tell me when I was younger, right? Like they were still on me that I can do anything, believe in yourself, the self confidence. Um, that was like that um, gateway where I could like focus on those things. Even if my grades weren't well, I knew I still had it in me to do that I could do good. So that always brought me back. That I'm like, no, 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 no. Even though I don't like what I'm learning in school, I still have it in me to succeed. And so I'll go from A's back then up to at ease, big E's even back then, right? So it was really bad. But then I'm like, no, what? I can do it. I remember those messages. So I want to instill now our children's books, those similar messages of self-confidence, um, believing in yourself, mm -hmm. motivation, um, innovation as well um, in all of our books. So it's like, no matter what you have going on, we want to instill those positive messages in them, um, whether from Long Marion, so we've been from uh, tri-state area, down stuff, we take our message anywhere with our books. That's deep. Yeah, because I mean, it's, it's, you know, school isn't the right fit for everyone and that's what it's all about, man. So good for you. Appreciate you. Yeah, it's very, very cool. So, uh, yeah, the studio, so everyone knows, is just a couple doors down from the Ardmore Music Hall. So, and it was the living room. Correct. Yeah. So it was, uh, we're here at 35 East Lancaster, um, here in Ardmore. And uh, before we took over this location, it was, um, actually it was a meeting space for a law, for a local law firm for a little bit, but right before that, uh, pre-pandemic, it was the living room. Okay. And we kept the stage uh, where they had it for the small um, music venue uh, location. Uh, the owner was like, do you want to remove the stage? And I'm like, no, 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 no. We can definitely use it for a lot of music for a lot of different uh, programs, um, podcasting and um, photography, a bunch of stuff. So we kept the stage. Um, we do some like open mics and stuff. Like we, again, outside of our work, we rent it out and we do a lot of different, like me from church services to open mics, hmm. um, arts and crafts, um, birthday parties, like we do a little bit of everything in it's here. a one-of-a-kind space you created it's, it's multi, very cool. multi and that's something i didn't even anticipate because Naj now you know made it uh, clear that we could have bands small bands perform as part of this podcast which right. we are going to have a little performance tonight too. that's right that's right well, again it was a music venue before we were here some people ask about music i'm like oh yeah well people in the community are used to be used to it because we were playing here when it was a living room so right. we're open to I'm pretty much open to anything here. Yeah, it's wonderful. Hey, well, thank you for joining me. Appreciate you. And, uh, you know, we're going to be uh, doing Very this smart. quite a bit every Monday for quite a while. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you uh, answered the call, not just because I'm excited for all the people you have thing until like September, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is good. Mm -hmm. um, but also because I we preach action, taking action. And a lot of people who answered the call, you're the, first, you're the first one to actually like do it, do it. Mm -hmm. But other people answered the call, but they didn't, they don't, they, they teed it off, right? And you didn't. So I appreciate you for that. So I'm looking forward to where this can go as well. Yep, got to take 2023 by the horns, you know? Somebody's got to. And be consistent. <laughs> so again, I appreciate you. Yeah, uh, I appreciate you. And it's uh, definitely a place that people in the community should know about for birthday parties, for kids, creative outlet. So uh, it's just scraping the surface here. It's very cool. Yeah, appreciate and, uh, it. And I'm, I'm glad to be here. So uh, cool. Yeah, Thanks, Naj. All right. Appreciate you. <clears throat> so that is uh, what brought me here, folks. And, uh, you know, I had done a podcast, but uh, it was uh, mostly remote. Started during COVID and uh, never did anything like this in person. So I'm glad to uh, be able to do that. Uh, for my next little bit, it's going to be a little short bit for my friend Side Arcana, Cross Country Mortgage, um, because part of that, what I'm trying to do here, in addition to the music, is to offer a little bit of value to friends of mine that might be actually out there looking to, to buy their first home or sell a home or have concerns. A lot of people I'm talking to lately have a lot of concerns. So I want to welcome you on Side from Cross Country Mortgage. How are you? I'm well, man. Good, good to see you, Sai. Si. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Got a good setup here. Yeah. Sai had me at a, a little bit of a shindig over the summer. 
out in Concha yeah, and yeah. and we, we linked up there through some mutual friends and uh, he's always sending me different pictures and graphics and you know wishing me luck and he's just a good positive vibe type of person. Yeah, good stuff. I'm glad I met you to our uh, mutual friends and then uh, got to get to our barbecue up in uh, Concha Hawk and I'm uh, at our uh, cross country mortgage office, uh, 625 West uh, Ridge Pike. So that was a great event. Looking for some more like this one too. So yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, same to you, man. Uh, and you know, it's it's always great working with you too. So it's everything is is always smooth as can be, and that's that's another reason why I wanted to bring you on too. Yeah, you've always been a good uh, real estate partner. So thought I'd return the favor and come to this show and. Uh, Put some education out there on some of the concerns that your friends and colleagues might have. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the funny thing, you know. That's a, there's a general sentiment out there. It's a little little bit of doom and gloom, but it, it, you know, it it seems to me that you know, no matter what, it's always good to be able to to get yourself some real estate if you're able to, you know, not to be renting if, if right. at all possible. And, right. and I know that you, you know, you kind of help a lot of first time home buyers. Yeah. So, um, you know, let me get the elephant out of the room. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we are in a recession. Um, we're not too far into a recession that, that things are going too bad. Um, and the other tidbit is that most successful people or most people build their wealth through a recession. You can't go any lower, right? Um, obviously we're not, in a depression or whatnot, but uh, these are the times to think about buying a home. Um, the economy, um, you know, is, is not tanking, uh, but some of the values for homes um, can only go up after you've purchased them. So if you have saved enough um, and your credit's good enough, and there's a, other situations, other financial um, factors into it, but if you can purchase a home now while we're in sort of sort of a recession because we're showing some signs of recovery and when we start recovering it may be too late for you to earn some equity from a property to uh, purchase during a recession so where are we at right now <clears throat> so the you know the other the other big topic for for a lot of people is the, where are interest rates right so everybody has these predictions um the biggest factor when you want to talk about interest rates for a home uh, property when you're purchasing is inflation when inflation rises interest rates go up so that's your biggest indicator no matter what anyone can tell you so today uh the national uh inflation uh number is at 7.1 Right now, this isn't coincidence. It doesn't always work this way, but the national average today for interest rates, a 30 year fixed mortgage is also at 7.1. So they're not always going to coincide or almost be equal. Um, but, uh, you know, 7.1 today, the 30 year interest rates <clears throat> last month, it was at 7.75. And inflation was in the 7.7. So is it a coincidence that they're both on the same, uh, sort of like the same number? Yes, but it's not a coincidence that when one went down, so did the other. Um, so that's where we are with the national average as far as 30-year uh, mortgage interest rates. Any particular tips for listeners out there who might be looking to buy their first home? Uh, any programs in particular that you, you can offer? Um, so there's a lot of programs there. The number one tip I can give is, is get to know all the factors. Um, everybody's trying to sell bells and whistles. Um, there are things that uh, can get you into a home without um, spending too much as far as down payment goes and closing costs. Um, the number one uh, tip I can give is that the cost to purchase a home is, uh, is cons consistent of a down payment and then closing costs. There are the, the myth out there that a lot of people mistake is that, oh, they just have to cover the, the uh, down payment and that down payment comes with the closing costs and vice versa. It does not. They're two separate things. Um, so get to know that then speak to a lender as, like myself. Um, by the way, you can get the same information uh, if you log on to sidearcano.loans. Um, but uh, the other tip is 
we're heading into a buyer's market if we're not already there. So six months ago, you could get, it was difficult to get seller's assist. Uh, seller's assist is where the seller has the kind hard enough to give you money to cover your closing costs. And maybe all you need to cover is your down payment uh, before you, we didn't have that. Um, and inventory is still low, uh, but that does give a buyer's market the opportunity for uh, sellers to sort of negotiate maybe the price going down a little bit more. Um, but just remember, if you're asking for seller's assist and then asking for them to lower their price, that's a tough deal to, to, to accept from the sellers. So that's probably some of the tips that I can give you is, uh, you know, get to know that it is, we are in a buyer's market all the so. Perfect. Yeah, just um, there's always hope. Don't yeah. be don't be so gloomy, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's what uh, I try. There are a lot say. of doubt payment systems mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. The one um, target that I want to I want to give a tip to are uh, like musicians yourselves, um, those who aren't earning the W two income, people that um, mm -hmm. are self employed, mm -hmm. uh, people who, whose income is up and down, and mm -hmm. they have to be average. There there is hope for you. Um, there's bank statement loans out there. Um, and you're not going to be stuck with these. Uh, some of the terms are pretty, pretty, uh, they're not too good, but you're not stuck in, in that. Um, the goal is to get you to home and then there's the opportunity to refinance out of it. Mm -hmm. So it may be a bad deal, but always talk to your lender to see how you can recoup from all your expenses from a bad deal. Cause you can, it's called equity. Mm -hmm. So, and right now, if you purchase a home, it's a big opportunity to get the equity and refinance yourself out of a, a crap deal or whatnot. So. Okay, makes sense. Yep, yep. Well, well, thanks, Saad. Appreciate you joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we'll be talking soon. Yep. All right. So uh, this brings us to our final guest of the evening, which uh, is is really exciting. Uh, <clears throat> go back quite a ways actually the Ardmore Music Hall when it was still 23 East um, my band Old Soul was running a jam session there and Andy used to come out and play songs and uh, you know I know had his life profoundly changed by Old Soul <laughs> got the t-shirt that was fun <laughs> and uh, and then things really blew up for 23 East and it became the Ardmore Music Hall it's what you know the venue that we all love today. So Andy, Josh, and Joe from 314, come on over, have a seat. What's up, Mark? What's up, guys? How are you? Thanks for uh, having us. Yeah. You know, in preparing for this, I, I really was, I was thinking to myself how cool it is that you're the first guest man. You know, we're excited that, that you guys but but me and you really go back to that time i remember you know when you first were coming out and and just playing that was that was like were you first time you were kind of playing in public really oh uh, yeah kind of like to kind of doing a dry run on yeah. all the songs and yeah uh, publicly performing with them yeah uh -huh. about that time Nice. So, uh, yeah, and I mean, uh, that, you know, I think it was uh, not to blow anything up, but maybe underage at the time. Who knows? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, you know, there's no backtracking <laughs> off of that now, no, uh, Andy, but, uh, but those were good times for sure. Um, and, you know, I mean, in the time that I got to know you, I mean, I, obviously I know some of your influences and stuff like that, but we never really spoke that deeply about like what, what made you want to play? Like what made you pick up an instrument? I mean, the biggest thing really, I would say, is writing music, you know, kind of started with, I come from Greece, you know, where sometimes I'm like, you guys hear this new band, like Led Zeppelin? And they're like, yeah, dude, we've heard Led Zeppelin. So <laughs> I started with like Bob Marley and Nirvana, and just that like real simple to the heart, like type of songs and just songwriting was really where it kind of started for me. Okay. Yeah. And then slowly getting to know the right people and um getting into the scene you know that kind of evolved you know of course the grateful dead came along <laughs> okay you know, sister you know uh -huh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah like i know i know that you love them of course and, uh, 
you know, um, so yeah, I just was, you know, I, I, I Dylan, I know you talk, you, you, you're big into him. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's a big one. I mean, I probably at one point in my life locked myself in for a couple months and did nothing but Dylan, you know, mm-hmm. um, transformative stage, you know, between every album, I was kind of transforming with them. You know, it was a crazy type of, like I couldn't even listen to certain types of music because I got so into that. It was like the only thing that was really just kind of healing me. Yeah. That's and, a good uh, word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great word, you know, because I, I always think about music because music had a, a, a profound effect, like a healing effect in my life. You know, so and it, and it is. It's like an ancient healing. Word. It really is. You know, I mean, it's it's nothing new. You know, we think about it in a certain context based around the music that we're familiar with, but you know, um, it goes back quite a way. So, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, and then uh, three fourteen was that that that's. I mean, obviously, that was that your first band, really. Uh, really, yeah. I mean, I've had some basement bands, uh-huh. you know, but never really something that was worth holding on to and something worth kind of getting up for every morning. And, you know, until I met Josh at the Blockley, actually, Uh another real, real hot spot at the time. Yep. Um, Then met Joe and we're we're kind of, uh, yeah, still here. It's been about nine years later. And, you know, that's uh, 314 is the bread and butter, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, 314 we spoke about in the past. Like, what uh, what, what was the, the deal with the name again? So, like, it started, like, as a kid, waking up in the middle of the night, and it was always 314 o'clock. Didn't even catch on until, like, I kept seeing it. And then even after I met the guy, you know, he kept seeing the number. And then the one time we went out to dinner, it was, like, 8 p.m., and the receipt came back, and it said 314. I was like, dude, like, what the hell? One time we're in Philly. I mean, Josh could probably take take that story. He's a good storyteller. Which one? Which <laughs> With one? the race car. Oh, number yeah. 314 that pulls up yeah. next to us. Oh, wow. Yeah, like a race car. Random, like a, like a NASCAR. formula, like a NASCAR that just randomly pulled up right next to us. Joe was there too. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those like, what the hell is a NASCAR 314 doing next to us in Philly? Probably oh, driving from one lot to the other. But that one is of those pretty random. Where you're like, dude, like, it's undeniable. Uh huh. And then our friends see you now. They send us texts. Sometimes you have friends that are born on three fourteen. So uh, it's almost like a blessing and a curse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, birthdays, it's pie. It's all that fun stuff. Yeah. Einstein's birthday to Casey yeah. Jones' birthday, actually. Uh, Casey Jones. Yeah, Casey Jones. Yeah, when I, I figured that one out too, a couple years ago, we looked at Casey Jones was born on three fourteen. Yeah. Wow. No, yeah, I remember you you mentioned it was just a number that kind of just always kept came up. So, yeah, so. yeah. So now the real reason I brought you on the show, world politics. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 we can talk about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, you know, I know you have some ideas there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, what I like about this is how creative this format is. It's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, 314, we, 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 we got that. And, and I did know, you know, you're Greek. And, and you told me a little bit about coming up. Like, you, your family had a, had a restaurant? Yeah, they got a peach shop, you know, the classic, yeah. the classic Greek thing. Uh-huh. Uh, they still got a peach shop. And it, yeah. A lot of other things. Down by Chester? Is that where? Is it in yeah, Chester? Yeah, it's in Chester. Yeah, Giorgio's Pizza. Check it out. Okay, right. there you go. Yeah. Here. Check it out. <laughs> Chester's a long way from uh, where we are right now, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little different here. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's uh, so grew up in Greece. Uh huh. Came here. I mean, that maybe that's where the songwriting philosophy type of things from. You know, uh-huh. Okay. You know, but, um, uh huh. Okay. But uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh and maybe they had hopes that you'd take over the shop one day. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And then I they're like, it. hey, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna work out. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in the fish in aquariums. That's deep. I like that, man. Yeah, man. It's, yeah. it's my life. Yeah. Uh-huh. I work with aquariums and I service aquariums and I uh, manage a company with the aquariums and all that stuff. And that's uh-huh. kind of uh another 
another big aspect of everything. You uh-huh. know? And, um, when you're overwhelmed with one, sometimes music is too much, you know, sometimes everything mm-hmm. is too much. Mm-hmm. And that's a safe place for me. You know? Man, yeah. you know, I, I, I only got to snorkel one time in the Cayman Islands and it was like a life changing experience. Man. Just like, you know, cause there are some of the clearest waters, very calm. And uh, just going right off the beach, you could see so much stuff. It was just amazing. So, I mean, to be able to swim amongst that stuff is pretty cool. But just to, to do what you do, I've seen a lot of the work you do. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, so, maybe some of your houses uh, want a fish tank sometimes. Too, you know? Yeah, you, <laughs> seriously, that's a great idea. I think some of them probably would. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, so is that just something you kind of fell into? Just always had an interest in? Yeah, I mean, it started kind of in the river, collecting frogs, things like that. Uh-huh. And then it turned into my job, basically. So, Got it. Yeah, so it's reef tanks. You know, they're pretty involved. They're not oh. just like a goldfish tank. You got coral and thousands of dollars investments. In saltwater, fresh? Both. Yeah, saltwater, fresh. Both. Either or. But reef tanks, like where the, where the addiction's at, you know, it, it gets real deep there. There's all kinds of colors and uh-huh. coral and um, I mean, I've shown the guys in my basement. We pretty much like came up playing. Like we played, we started in Andy's basement, you know. So uh-huh. started bothering the hell out of his parents, playing in his basement every Wednesday night. But we would like stop in between, yeah, in between tank. songs and go just stare at the tank. Like there's pictures. I don't know who took who took it, but there's pictures of us just from in between jams, just three of us faces right in front of the tank, just staring. Because there's so many little things, every crevice, there's something moving everywhere. Yeah. We spent so much time just looking at it and talking about it and discussing it, you know? Well, you know, and, and that was like one of the healthiest times I think Jerry had was when he was like scuba diving and really getting into that, you know, before he, things went a little south again. Yeah. But uh, so, so that's interesting too. Um, but yeah, so yeah, yeah, there was like, he's not taking over this pizza shop. <laughs> yeah, I, I did it for a little bit. And you know, it's, it's not yeah. my company. The yeah. aquariums, that's cool. Yeah. Joe, tell me, about, I don't know that much about you. Um, what was it? You know that? I do know that. But yeah. uh, Delco guy through and through, but for I work at I worked at Wawa. That's where these guys met me. Okay. And I was you know making sandwiches where I met these guys first, and then other than that, I, I stopped doing that. I manage a tape company right now, but. It's a day job. What no. kind of tape? Any kind? Adhesive foam tape. Oh. Bonding stuff for cars and, and buildings and a bunch of, I let him sell the stuff and I run the guy's company. It's awesome. Okay. But uh, it's it was like a mom and pop that built, built, built. So I got it in the ground up, but at the same time, it's like, it's a job. That's just a moneymaker to play the music. Right. But uh, I've been doing that and then playing music with these guys for a long time. But I played, started with guitar. Mm-hmm. Moved to bass because nobody played bass when I was like 21 years old. Couldn't find a bass player. So mm-hmm. I didn't play bass. Played in basement garage bands, played out a little bit like the XO lounge back in the day and stuff on stage. I forget what that was, but played some spots and then met these guys and actually really started to play music, you know, and fall in love with it. So that's the outlet. And uh, that's me. It's for the most part. <laughs> uh, right, right. I mean, if you could kick condense it into 30 seconds, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that would be impressive. But no, I mean, uh, all good. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. Fill the base roll. Hold down that bottom end. Man. It's, it's all about foundations and all of this stuff, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Base park foundation, your real estate's foundation. So, yeah, you need a roof over your head. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> you don't necessarily, but. That's a hard road, but uh, <laughs> Josh and you have, have you know bass and drums. That's where it's at. You guys have formed you, you formed a bond there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I noticed that from early on, seeing three fourteen. Well, I've lost a look at him. I think when everybody's lost in the band, they look at him. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the ultimate. Yeah, yeah. That's the ultimate move. But there's like a moment where like, geez, how they're like, just look at Joe, just look at Joe. And Joe was like, no. <laughs> 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 Sometimes from the corner of my eyes, Joe, like moving. Like, oh, I missed the part. Oh, man. <laughs> I totally know what you mean. Things kind of go a little sideways. You're like, oh, you got to find that one person to bring yeah, it to real yeah. us back in. You yeah, know? Their anchor. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. We can't, can't put a price on that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So yeah, you know, I, I just um, happy to have you guys here. Um, what's I know you put out an album in 2021. Or yeah, two. we did. It was uh, 2021. Really should have been like 2019, but <laughs> there was almost you know like COVID was coming. It was a whole like year where editing just kind of fell off. And we were you know we're at that point like are you going to release these things? Like let's just wrap it up and release it at this point before mm-hmm. another year goes. Even by. though we had a whole album's worth of new material by the time we finished it up, we're like, well, we're ready to go back in already. We have a whole album's worth of new material that we love even more. Mm-hmm. But we got to finish up the other one first. Yeah, so it was kind of like a delayed type of record, which we love, you know, don't get me wrong, but it was kind of just getting the job done type of record where we're, we're ready to kind of get, take get back in there and have some fun with it. We know what we like and we know what we don't like about recording and stuff, and we know we want to have a little more fun with it and take it take a little further, I guess. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, when you mentioned COVID, it reminded me, like we were talking about earlier about, um, you know, Steal Your Peach and 314 were supposed to play the TLA, and uh, that got canceled because of COVID. <laughs> it was going to be a big show right around 420, 41820, I think it was. But uh, we'll get back to that. And we played the Brooklyn Bowl. Yeah, yeah that was a ton of fun. That yeah. was. Yeah. That was exactly. like, what I sat in with you guys too, and that was like, that was next level. That yeah. was very good. Yeah, very yeah, fun. For sure. <laughs> I remember that. I got a video of it. Oh, yeah. He even sung on that, too, mm-hmm. right? Okay. That was very cool. Um, we'll be back there, uh, Steal Your Peach, on the 3rd of February. So that'll be fun. Um, they kind of broke up the night now. So there's like an early show and a late show. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what that's I'm cool. hearing. So that'll be fun. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? The, uh, what do you have in store for 2023? So we've got a few things lined up, good amount of things. I mean, uh, we can only talk about so much, I guess you could say. <laughs> we got uh, 12 plus shows lined up uh-huh. uh, for the next couple months. Um, and we're going to, I think we're making our way out of state. Okay. And um, yeah, we're getting ready to basically announce a small little, little tour and we're staying busy, staying pretty busy this year, yeah. kind of tighten the band up. Got um, our friend Jamie joining the band. Right, Lundmark. Lundmark. Yeah, yeah. That's a whole new sound for you. Definitely, man. We've been doing it. Like, he's always like, here's featured guest Jamie, featured guest Jamie. And it's like, all right, let's just kind of make it official. Um, And there's a lot of songs it works with. Where is Jamie tonight? We're missing Jamie. Such as back home doing some sort of a culinary uh, delight, I'm sure. Some 22 um, hour meat smoking or something. Yeah, 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 probably. <laughs> <laughs> and our friend Jerry just joined too. Yeah. Actually, yeah, it's a um, long time playing with him. Uh huh. So, yeah, tell me about him. I saw him play with you at the, uh, what was that, that little mini fest out at, in, in, that got moved indoors that I came and saw you guys. Oh, was Jam on the Grass? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, that was your fest. That's yeah, right. Yeah. 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 We weren't, we weren't ready to change the data. They were like, all right, we got to do this no matter what. And we moved in and it ended up working out. Uh-huh. Yeah, we, we do a festival every summer. And uh-huh. um, this year it rained two years out of the nine years. It uh-huh. rained, so, I mean, it's not too bad, but we moved it indoors. And it's, it was still a lot of fun. It made it happen. It was yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. And Jerry played. That was the first time I think I've seen him play with you. He's great. Oh, yeah. It's probably the most, like the first almost full set that he played with us was before we had him sit in for couple one-offs different random sit-ins at different shows but now uh-huh. that was like us like getting him into more of the music and uh-huh. learning more of our original music and right oh that was that show was yeah okay, okay. we're yeah. in like a couple and then he'd play half a set and then he played a full set and then he was playing set set and, then pushes. and how do you guys know him I go way back from him when I used to do the open mic at 2312. Oh, okay. He's jam, you know, he's, he's the type of guy, you know, he, he shows up there, we have a, a shot of Jameson together and mm-hmm. uh, kind of jam out, have a lot of fun. And mm-hmm. We always had this dream of being in a band together. I hmm. pictured it as a side project because we had 314, but we just went through a big rebirthing phase where our guitarist Apple actually left the band. Right. Um, things got a little busy, a little too serious. So, mm-hmm. um, but Jerry kind of took that role and now he's, uh, dude, he's, he's all, I mean, he's all in. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it definitely started as like 
he was like, I want to fill in. Like, if you yeah. guys want me to, like, I love playing with you guys and wanted to play more. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, yeah, let's just keep doing it, you know? And we kind of had the idea, I think, that we were going to keep trying to look for a new guitar player. But then, like, more he started picking it up, and he was like, if you guys are cool with this, he's like, I'm, I'm all in with this, you know? Like, he really wants to play. He definitely, he used to play. He's definitely got a big music background growing up and living with people and that are pretty big in music now, I guess. And he grew, he grew up, he, he lived in house, grew up with Kid Funkadelic. They were, they were buddy, they were roommates Michael, for a long time. That's that, Michael Hampton? Uh, okay, yeah, uh-huh. But um, he grew up with a lot of those yeah. guys playing uh -huh. music and then I guess went just like the working route, but he's like, I don't know, I don't want to say like re in love with music, I know he's always loved music, but like jumping back into playing and he's definitely, he's definitely having a really good time playing with us, you know, as we are with him. Yeah, you guys sounded great that night, that's, that's for sure, so um, that's cool. So you're going to do a little tour, you can't really divulge all the information, a little top secret. Yeah, that's too much, yeah. yeah. The, that's okay. Within the next month, it'll, it'll be out there. Okay. We got um, kind of, like I said, rebirth things, so a little little image change and stuff yeah. like that yeah anyway, see some new colors floating around so uh -huh. yeah that's what we got we're pretty excited because yeah. last year was i don't want to say it we made it work we floated our way through it but we had to find a new guitarist we we realized we weren't a power trio yeah <laughs> <laughs> basically okay yeah yeah no i you guys did that for a little while what was uh with, 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 with apples a four piece right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so. um cool uh, you guys are going to play a couple songs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have, what, two? How many songs were you planning to play? Two sounds good. All yeah. right, very cool. Yeah, um, it, I, I didn't even anticipate necessarily having performances. Or I just thought we have, uh, you know, tonight we're just going to have uh, acoustic guitar and bass, but we have a little stage here. So uh, that's going to be a pretty cool element of the show. And, uh, yeah, you guys can get set up to play. All right. Awesome. Um, and it, yeah, in the meantime, um, we just probably need like a minute to set up. Where do you want these guys at? Same seat, same seat. I can scoot over a little bit. I'm not in, I'm not playing, so. Um, let's see what they decide. Okay. While they're setting up, I um, actually have a new blues band that's going to be debuting at the Cigar Republic in Concha Hocken on the 20th of January. Uh, a couple of guys from Steal Your Peach. We got Adam Flicker on keys and Andrews Allfelt on bass. And then a former member of Steal Your Peach, Mark Shuchuk, will Woo! be joining us on drums. Um, it'll be fun to get into that. Um, a little funky blues for, for people. Come on out and join us. Twenty first, uh, steal your peach will be out at the Newtown Theater in Bucks County. That show is just about sold out, so if you want to come, uh, there's only a few tickets left. And then February the third, we're at the Brooklyn Bowl, the early show from like eight to ten thirty. So come on out for that. Just know that it's a little bit earlier start, like eight o'clock. And then of course, St. Patty's Day, March the 17th, we will be at the Ardmore Music Hall with Ron Holloway. And that will be a lot of fun, as it always is with Ron. Uh, doing the Watkins Glen Summer Jam, mixing up music of the Allman Brothers, the Grateful Dead and the band, since it is the 50 year anniversary of that prestigious festival. Awesome, man. St. Patty's at uh, the music hall. Yeah. Yeah. Badass. Yeah. And it's a Friday this year. So, oh, nice. yeah. We're actually, we're going to be down in Downingtown at the. Uh...
Tell us, uh, <laughs> uh, you want to share a little bit what, what inspired that one in particular? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we don't really talk about songs much, you know. Truth is, I kind of let the interpretation do its part. Um, what I will say is, this one was written uh, during the COVID time. It's not about COVID, it's not one of those like COVID songs. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. <laughs> Something about that because that time was so deep. That time was so like you had We're still in it, aren't we? We are, but like there was a moment where you had to dig in yourself and find what you really love. If you had nothing left, yeah, what did you really love? You know, it's like got in the bike ride a lot. Did you? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. yeah. Oh, yeah, it was good to get out and fresh air. Oh yeah. yeah. But I know, I know what you, I know what you mean. It was very, you know, talk about isolation, definitely. And you know, my house at the time was. I had people in and out, and it was kind of like, I'd say a couple steps away from, uh, oh, you were one of those guys. <laughs> she, <me too. laughs> the cops, the cops may or may not have gave them out. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, the song was kind of like written at 6 a.m. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, All right. Uh, nothing wrong with that. It's probably when most of the best songs have been written. Yeah. That's very cool. Well, I liked it. That was very nice. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Yeah, so I think this one uh, is a little bit of a brighter song. Okay. So you can look at it from the other side of the scope. You know? All right. It's more of a nowadays, you know, we got. It's a post COVID song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> We're coming out of the dark. You know, Chico on the rise. Thank you. 
It's uh, it's one of those like full band effort type of songs, uh, and they're both new songs. Yeah, yeah they pulled it off well. That was neat. That was neat. What was that called? Uh, Chico on the Rides. And that one has not been recorded yet. Nah. Neither yeah. have. Nice. Yeah, we actually kind of just square away a new type of ending for that one. It's pretty cool. It's got like some cool little things going on in the end there. Okay. Each guitar is passing back and forth. If you yeah. had the full band, yeah, gotcha. yeah. We made it work with just two. Very well. I was there too. I was, I was in that time. <laughs> <laughs> Watching intently, I saw. Um, so your next gig is at one eighteen North, right? Yes, February twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Still asking. Yeah, we got some tickets and all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, we moved pretty yeah. fast. And it's a uh, it is a website 314.com right? uh, 314fan.com all right now words got it yeah good stuff man well uh that one uh, you said was written around the same time uh that one was written somewhat recently you know after after like the summer festival season type thing you know uh it's a brighter song about brighter times mm -hmm. probably one of our newest originals yeah yeah, one of the newer original songs. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not taken down. Yeah, both of the ones we play actually are fairly new. But uh, you got playing, some rehearse and uh, what's the Dead Planet? Yeah, Dead yeah. Planet. Nice. 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 You've been there and that's I have. Yeah, we rehearsed there and uh, yeah, we did the rehearse there actually. But yeah, I go there and it's uh, living in Lansing for the new line, so it was pretty close by. Yeah, like some renovations and repair and that was kind of like too, but yeah, yeah, you can go to the There you go. A little shout out for Red Planet. Thanks. Oh, while I'm here, I got this strap that I just wanted to show off here. My buddy Justin's probably out there, may or may not be out there. Okay, I mean, oh, wow. for my 30th birthday. So. Oh my god. Yeah, it's got a little bit of some ancient Greek stuff, the pie symbols, some break the bed stuff mm -hmm. in there. Yeah, amazing. What a gift. Just wanted to let the other way know. I didn't carve my own name. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me on my first show. Yeah. And I uh, can't wait to join you guys and do some, some playing. Uh, I've been getting out there and doing a little more playing lately, so that's, that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, that's uh, you know pretty much uh, at this point, you know, it, it's been you know you guys can just hang. I mean, we've got a few minutes left, but uh, you know, the response I've gotten since I've announced this podcast is pretty overwhelming um, to the point where I'm booked out to September. And I just wanted to say, if anyone's watching, as far as anyone that may have reached out that I didn't get back to, um, just know that you know I'm aware, and I will get back to. You. Um, but it just, you know, I kind of got swamped with stuff. Um, so I did want to make mention uh, of the next guest that uh, we have on, because uh, that is coming up next Monday, as this will be every Monday. And next Monday, we have Jack Shouty of Darlington. You guys know Jack? Yeah. 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 I think we played with him in the past. There, there's a few yeah. times in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think they played their first uh, uh, Philly Folk Fest, and I know they, they got a spot at Golf Fest last so. Sunday. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah they did, so. Um, so that'll be fun having Jack on next week. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed what, what they uh, saw here and heard here tonight. And uh, this is, uh, you know, a blessing to be here at the uh, Daydream Creative Studios, a place you guys should definitely check out if you have uh, friends and family local to the Ardmore area. And uh, it, it's, it's, you know, I got to say, I mean, I'm humbled by the, the opportunity to really do this because, I mean, 
the Ardmore, Delaware County, Philadelphia area is just swamped with so much musical talent. Like I, you know, even in 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 my band or traveling other places, I mean, you know, of course there's there's musicians all over, but there's really a good concentration of music there. And, and the energy in Philadelphia and the Philadelphia music scene, I think, is very positive and supportive. And uh, I'm glad to kind of give it a voice here. You know, so uh, it's a great lineup that I have all the way out to September with people like Danny Mayer, who's in Eric Krasno band, a star fiction, and friends of mine like uh, Hezekiah Jones and Chris. And, uh, so uh, we hope that uh, you will continue to uh, check in every week. Monday from seven to eight here. And uh, we'll only get better with this and have some performances, maybe even on stage at some point. And uh, I guess that's it. Tune in out. This is uh, Mainline of Beyond with Mark Singer. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time.